Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and selamat sejahtera. So in this uh, lecture video content, we're going to explore about the female reproductive system. Okay, so a little bit overview about the system. Right, so overview of female reproductive system. 4.0 is the normal pH of the woman's vagina. 40 weeks is the normal or the normal gestational period. 400 oocytes are released in between menarche and menopause. 400,000 oocytes are present during puberty and 28 days is the normal average menstrual over the cycle. Towards the end of this video content, you should be able to know the structure of the primary sexual characteristics for females, which are the ovaries, explain the ovarian cycle and also the menstrual cycle. So for the second objective, you also have to relate between these two cycles. And then we're going to explore the gross microscopic uh, view of the fallopian tubes or the uterine tubes, the uterus, the vagina, mammary glands, as well as the list of other external genitalia for female. We're also going to look at the fertilization. And finally, we're going to explore and understand about the pregnancy. So let us begin uh, this video content with the anatomy of the female reproductive system. Okay, right, so the female water system, the external genitalia occupy most of the perineum and they are collectively known as the vulva or pudendum. Okay, so I repeat, the external uh, female genitalia occupy most of the woman's perineum and they are collectively known as the vulva or in other words, we also call it as the pudendum, P-U-D-E-M-D-U-M. Right, they include the mons pubis, okay, uh, clitoris, labia majora, labia minora, uh, vaginal orifice, hymen, and accessory glands, and also the erectile tissues. So, in this slide, as you can see, right, this is the list of uh, external genital structures, okay, which uh, occupy most of the perineal area in women. So, the mons pubis located at the pubic region. The clitoris, okay, which is uh, homologous to the male's penis. The labia majora, labia minora, external urethral orifice, vaginal orifice, hymen, and also Bethlehem's gland. Okay, looking at the internal uh, structures uh, of the female system, okay, we're going to explore afterward the structure of the the structure and function of the vagina, skin's gland, the structure and the function of cervix uterus, fallopian tubes, and finally, we're going to also look at the ovaries as well as the uh, the breast, okay? Right. So, the external female reproductive system, okay? We should uh, be able to locate, okay, the location of the mons pubis, okay? Locate the location of the clitoris, the uh, external urethral orifice, the vaginal orifice, Okay, the labia majora as well as the labia minora. Okay, and then the perineum area as well as the anal part. Okay, next, looking at the vulva, right? So the vulva is the entire collective uh, external genitalia for female, right? Okay, so many organs are homologous to the male parts. Okay, for example, the glans clitoris, okay, uh, is actually homologous to the glans penis. Okay, labia majora and labia minora, external uterus orifice, the skin's glands, homologous to the prostate gland, the vaginal orifice, the hymen or the corona, or in uh, Malay we call it as the selaput darah lah, okay, hymen or corona. Okay, and lastly the bartonis gland is actually homologous uh, to the corpus gland in male. Okay, first we look at the glans clitoris, okay. So, uh, the, the clitoris of, of the female is a structure like the penis in many respects, but uh, the clitoris has no urinary role, okay. It's just a structure, a short structure, similarly to the male's penis, okay, homologous to the male's penis, but it has no urinary role. Its function is entirely more to uh, sensory, serving as the primary center for sexual stimulation. Okay, uh, unlike the penis, it is uh, almost entirely internal. Okay, so the entire structure of the clitoris uh, mostly are located internal. Okay, it has no corpus spongiosum. Okay, and it does not enclose the uh, urethra. Okay, 
Essentially, it is a pair of uh, it has a, a pair of corporal cavernosum enclosed in the collective tissue. Okay, it has uh, the head part. The clitoris has the, the head part or the glands which protrude slightly from the prepuce. Okay, right. Okay, and then uh, the body or the corpus part of the uh, woman's clitoris uh, passes internally, inferiorly located to the pubic symphysis. Okay, right. Okay, so the circulation and the innervation of the nerve for the clitoris are similarly like those uh, in the male penis. Okay, it is uh, so the female clitoris normally composed of erectile tissue, uh, which are homologous to the penis. Okay, it has uh, the same corpus cavernosum tissue, but actually without no spongiosum. Okay, there is no corpus spongiosum within female clitoris. Okay. Uh, the shaft of the body of the clitoris is merely one inch long and varies in size and shape. Okay, so this is the the internal structure of the the entire clitoris. Okay, most of the structure of the female clitoris are embedded within the internal uh, uh, pelvic area of the female body. Right. Okay. So next. Okay. Right. So next we move on to the labia tissues. Okay. So to the labia tissues. Uh, actually, uh, there are two types of labia, right? So labia majora is mean meaning the, uh, it means the large lips, okay? Protect the entrance of the vagina. Uh, uh, from its name, the word majora means uh, it comes in the large shape and fleshy. It contains sweat and oil secreting glands, and they are covered by hair after puberty. Whereby for the labia minora, the small lips, okay, lie interior to the labia majora. Uh, surrounds the entire urethral and vaginal orifice and they are normally hairless. Okay, next, the hymen, tough but elastic semicircle tissue, they are also known as the vagina corona, covers the opening of the vagina or the vaginal orifice during childhood and often uh, thorn during the first intercourse or any vigorous exercises such as uh, gymnast, gymnastic or rough and rough sports. Okay, so these are the examples of the um, of the hymen okay so this is the location of the hymen so for normal hymen it is partially uh, opening the the vaginal orifice okay but in some uh, uh, minor abnormality of the hymen there are also several types of abnormality for the hymen such as imperforated hymen micro perforated hymen and also the septal hymen so especially for the imperforated and also micro perforated hymen uh, then the the then the doctors have to we have to uh, do a little bit of uh, incision lah, okay to open up uh, the, the the vaginal orifice yeah, in order uh, okay for the for the kids when the when when the girls have is having the first menarche means the first period now the 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 tissues okay the the tissues the debris can simply uh, flush out lah, from this uh, orifice okay if not there there is going to be a trouble lah. so we have to do a small incision in this area in order to allow a smooth uh, movement of uh, debris eh? several debris of the uterus uh, came out from this orifice okay right so the hymen has no nerve innervation uh, in newborn babies uh, which still undergo uh, influence of the mother's hormone uh, normally uh, in the newborn babies okay the hymen is thick pale pink in color and redundant uh, in between the age of two to five years old the infant produces uh, hormones that continue this effect their hymen opening tends to be annular or circumferential after six years old which uh, becomes subject to change and uh, can easily or naturally uh, uh, uh thorn by itself okay right okay next moving on to the skin's gland named after a scientist uh, alexander skin a gynecologist who described them in a paper in 1880 okay so it is also known as the minor vestibular glands or the para urethral glands okay they it, these glands come in comes in pair merely two to three millimeter in diameter yes it is very small kind of gland Okay, but uh, this uh, skin gland is highly important and related to uh, actually referred to the G spot uh, in in women. Okay, so the G spot or actually referred as the Grafenberg spot uh, is becoming the female sexual arousal spot or location. Okay, so the main function of the skin gland is actually to produce a kind of fluid. So this fluid going to produce by some uh, woman during orgasm. Okay, females ejaculate fluid this, that comes from uh, the skin gland. Okay, right. So the skin glands uh, in women thought to have the same structural components as the male prostate. 
though they are much more smaller than the prostate gland interestingly they even produce a prostate uh, prostatic specific antigen or PSA. So the PSA is normally secreted from other female body tissues, possibly uh, becoming the diagnostic marker for for the breast cat, breast cancer diseases lah. Okay, right. Next, uh, the Bartholin's gland. Okay, Bartholin's gland uh, actually embedded with in between uh, the tissues of the labia majora. Okay, uh, this is uh, a pair of tissue uh, known as the major vestibular glands. Okay, just now is the minor vestibular glands. Okay, so this is the major vestibular glands comes in one pair, also in between two to three millimeter in diameter. They are actually homologous to the corpus glands in males. Okay, uh, it got two uh, specific functions. So the Bartholin's gland secrete mucus to provide uh, additional vaginal lubrication especially in the cost and also moistening the labial opening of the vagina okay right so in uh, certain cases okay there's uh, some women also develop uh, a cyst a kind of cyst we call it as the Bartholin cyst okay so this is uh, the cyst the Bartholin glasses has to be removed okay uh, through a localized incision okay right and then uh, okay and then the, the the wound will heal in a couple of days okay right Okay, so the Bartholin cyst is uh, quite uh, common lah nowadays lah, in women. Okay, uh, normally due to uh, to the nearby infection lah, Okay, to the nearby infection, so the skin's bacteria in the vulva area tends to uh, crawl into the into the ductus of the Bartholin's gland and uh, dominate the internal uh, cells of the Bartholin's and making this uh, the Bartholin's gland uh, swell and uh, producing a cyst kind of appearance. Okay, right. Okay, so as a comparison, okay, uh, between the Bartholin's and the skin's gland, okay, so the Bartholin's similarly to the corpus gland, whereby the skin's gland similarly or homologous to the prostate gland, okay, uh, Bartholin's and skin's glands uh, have the same, almost the same uh, size in, uh, in diameter. There are two P size compounds located slightly posterior to the right and left vaginal orifice, okay. Right, uh, whereby the skin gland, also known as the para urethral gland or the minor uh, urethral glands, okay. Uh, in the skin gland, it produces PSA, uh, same as men, uh, which elevates uh, in the, the elevation of PSA indicates uh, prostate cancer for both men and women. Uh, in women, we going to use it as a diagnostic marker for breast cancer, lah, okay. And for the specific function of the Bartholin's gland, okay, it secretes mucus to lubricate the vagina prior to. Um, with the cause and it contains lots of enzyme and also the antibactericidal properties to prevent uh, further vaginal infection and for the specific function for the skin gland, uh, thought to produce uh, a special kind of fluid during the female orgasm okay right 